<laughs> growing up in the 70s what most of us remember is the shortages the sugar shortages the minimum shortages so often what happened is uh, your parents locked all this stuff up in the main bedroom cut as we called it in a big trunk in the wardrobe with a lock and the bedroom also locked for knocks eat your heart out what used to happen uh, pretty much like the alignment of the planets on some day one of your friends would come along and say hey the pantry is not closed they forgot to lock it i've got some sugar you know and somebody said i've got some medium now there's a dish we used to make it's called Damashola in Bemba. It's called Damashola. I've, I've tried getting details. I was actually going through uh, Sylvia Banda, Zambian cookbook. Just try and find a mashola, but nix nothing. Mealy meal was the main ingredient that we used to cook a mashola. As I said, what happened is your friends would come along when your parents were not around, when you discover that the sugar hadn't been fought noxed, the mealy meal wasn't fought noxed. Fortunately as well, if there was cooking oil, you could add cooking oil as well. Sometimes you'd go overboard if everything was not locked that they even add milk, you know, to make the delicacy called amashola. It's obviously not originally African. As you know, mealy meal was introduced by the Portuguese in the 16th century. Before that, the locals were eating uh, millet-based mealy meal and the sorghum based meal meal. But of course, after the introduction of meal meal from the Portuguese, they, they came with it from South America. Then the whole Central Africa, now it's meal meal, as you know, it's called Nishima. So amashola is a byproduct of meal meal. There was a trick in cooking amashola. <laughs> like I said, I've tried to get details of, of it. And uh, what is the English name? Interestingly, there was uh, a function I attended it was quite a number of years ago and there were all these different dishes from different countries and there was something i think it was greek or italian i can't remember that looked like a mashola it tasted like a mashola you could either eat a mashola with salt or you could go overboard like i said add sugar milk you know and all that if you had all the ingredients but because we always did this in a rush there was always somebody watching if your parents are coming so i'm gonna make an attempt i used to be good at this actually so uh, now what it entailed you got the mealy meal uh, the trick was in the original mix it was actually uh, better if you mixed it by hand not with with a stick is it on i've added salt uh, like i said if you ha if you had milk somebody found milk from the neighborhood if their cupboard wasn't locked up but there you added milk haven't added milk i've just added uh, a bit of salt uh, you could add sugar as well depending on how you want the taste the trick like i said is making sure that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan it means you're doing a good job so so far so good i'm not sure yeah still trying to get information on <laughs> what's the You know, what's the name, the, well, the English name, I suppose, for a mashola? Mm -hmm. It's just the right texture that it's supposed to be. So far, so good. It's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. And it's coming out all that oily, shiny. That was the right mixture of a mashola. Yeah, like I said, you could add sugar if you want. You could use milk instead of water. But the basic one you just did with mealy meal because you usually got into trouble that where did you get the mealy meal? You got sugar, my smack with hey, what do you want salad? <laughs> In fact, speaking about sugar and cooking all, what my friend and I did uh, when we were bachelors, the early days of bachelorhood when we felt we were free from servitude, we bought a container of cooking oil each and a packet of sugar and just poured it down the drain, you know, to show that we were free from servitude. <laughs> yeah, no more locking stuff up in the bedroom, main bedroom. Okay, yeah, it's looking okay. I can still do this. In other languages, was this a copper belt thing? A mashola. Oh, it was nakurusaka mare panga mashola. <laughs> yeah, it was a cup belt thing. Is it sticking? Uh oh. Okay. It's starting to stick just a bit at the bottom, which is okay because I think it's nearly done. I'm gonna just give it a few more minutes. 
We're almost done. Still not sticking to the bottom, so that means I've done a great job. <laughs> you can see from the stove that it's a man who's been cooking the stuff all over the bleeding place. I must say, I haven't done this since the 70s, I swear. And for me to be able to pull this off, I was a bit nervous at the start. Kupanga mashola wakamba. Mashola show. It's ready, so now we're gonna get a few guinea pigs. <laughs> Test if that's come out. Yep, just the way it's supposed to be. Just the way it's supposed to be. Having it stuck to the bottom of the pan. Consistency. Yeah. So, I'm gonna get some guinea pigs. Edit. So see, we're testing. Okay. <laughs> Guinea pigs are testing. It smells weird. It smells weird. You go first. No, we have to choose one. It's not that bad. Yeah, just plain. You can add sugar, you can add milk, taste. How does it taste? It's not bad. You know when you like when you burn in shima and then you have the little crinkly things at the bottom of the pot and exactly. you can pick them up and eat it. In fact the best the best part was the bottom part. Each guangwa. That was the best part of all this. But it was very filling when you came from school and you prepared that. It was very filling. Secretly. Are you sure the milk yeah, milk secretly. Yes, it is. Are you sure? That was a very, it was very important because if the mealy meal is not cooked, you'd get runs. Everybody would get that. So if I get the runs, I can... Yeah, you, you can blame me. But I've tested it. I'm the expert. Remember, not you guys. So it is. Any other comments? It's all right. It's, not, it's all right. It's not that bad. What do you mix it with? Like, what can I... What, I it's just mealy What meal. is it? Breakfast? Lunch? It didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe like in the afternoon. You could have it any time when it was available. It's not that bad. It kind of tastes like cookie dough. Like, no. Very plain cookies. Mm. Like scones. Like scones. Okay, good. So. I like the way it feels in my mouth. What would you eat it with? You just eat it like just that. Just like this? So, yeah, with water. You always had to add water. Yeah. If it was served to me, I would eat it. You would eat it. But I wouldn't ask for it. <laughs> it's not bad. It's just, you know. It's not plain. It's too plain for me. Yeah. It's too plain for me. Next time, add sugar. It's a, yeah, you can add sugar if you want. It's an um. advantage. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> still hot. But I've done it. Last made a mashola in the 70s, people. So like I said at the beginning of the video, <laughs> you made these when on that particular day, the meal me had been left unlocked, the sugar the cooking oil and you called all your friends in the neighborhood and you made a mashola there was always someone at the gate watching to see if the parents were on their way home because <clears throat> they didn't want you you didn't want them finding you making all this mess and wasting meal meal wasting cooking oil wasting sugar i can still do it yes the guinea pigs think otherwise is it for breakfast <laughs> Next week, I'm going to do another dish for you. Again, I'm trying to research what was the other names. Those of you who remember Chijanti. Yeah, Chijanti. Next week, <laughs> I'm going to make Chijanti. <laughs>